Morning, everybody. Sorry for the delay. Um, it kind of makes us all want to go back to drawing on pencils at times. <laughs> um, okay, so what we're going to do here, there's, there's a few things just to kind of give you a little lead up to this. Um, the stuff that we are going to be talking about today, uh, we have samples of it up here. So at the end, if you want to come up, if there's something that you've seen, we have all of the sets up here. We're good. <laughs> um, so uh, what we're going to do is uh, go through a, a myriad of things, kind of a 30,000 foot level. That's why there isn't anything on the USB stick. We are going to show you some of the processes that we go through, um, but we're going to uh, touch on a, a lot of things from small houses up to a $320 million project. So, um, so we're going to get started. Um, I'm going to... If you can indulge me for a few minutes, this is kind of how this all came about with the big cat. I'm sure there's a few people. Is there anybody here in this room that's heard that SketchUp's a cute little program? <laughs> okay, so indulge me here in the beginning here because we've, we've put together just a, a, a little uh, comic, if you will, to kind of lead up to how we, we came about with this. Um, maybe. There we go. So here we have Jake. Jake's an inspiring designer. He's a vibrant soul, and he want, all he wants to do is make a difference in the world with how he designs. He sees a world of, that he's dreamt of, of being vibrant in color, uh, full of life, full of 3D. Fortunately, Jake lives in a dark world, and this is where evil resides, or what we call the 2D. Um, 2D design is run rampant, a world where there's an absence of color, a world where this gentleman here, uh, the evil overlord Rake, has re uh, ruled supreme for over three decades. No puns intended there. A world where, dare we say it, SketchUp is that cute little program. For Jake, this is the world he's expected to live in. Or is it? So off in the distance, something approaches a bright shine to the sky. What is it? What could it be? None other than our superhero, Selim. He's the leader of START, the SketchUp through advancing realistic technology. Selim, it seems, has heard through the communication vortex that Jake's world is currently being overrun by 2D CAD junkies. These mischievous little creatures were once budding designers who fell into the world of gray. Now they do the bidding of Rake by wreaking havoc wherever good design tries to flourish, turning everything to gray. While Selim is yet but a fraction of the size of the evil di dictator, he shows Jake that the power and liberation can come from all sizes and that cute can be the sexy and powerful. So the power wielded within the red step, all spark of design as we've called it, is one that has the power to change the world and bring it back to a world full of color. Together they battle Rake to win the freedom of designers everywhere to make a world that truly lives in 3D the way it was meant to be experienced, a world where SketchUp is no longer that cute little program. This is what we call Big Cad in SketchUp, or as Mike Brightman has coined it, Big Caddy by Big Daddy. <laughs> the reason we say that is my email address for Jamin, we have our first initial last name, so with it being Dwayne Addy, I get daddy, so I get to have a pretty cool email address. Okay, so I am, uh, as I said, I'm Dwayne Addy. I'm the creative director of product development for Jamin Built. So Jamin is Alberta, Canada's largest home builder. Um, last year alone, we did 880 houses. At the same time that we were building our, what we call our Westman Village project, which is a $320 million development multifamily that has about a th almost 1,000 units to it. Um, also with me, you'll see standing off to the side, is Rodolfo Masias, which many of you have probably met at some of the mixers. Uh, Rodolfo is one of my senior designers, and basically he's my devil's advocate, right-hand man. He's the guy that tells me that I'm crazy with these ideas, and we still go forward with them. <laughs> so today's agenda, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna kinda talk about some of the history, how some of this kinda came to be, what we're trying to do with our company, where. Our housing division is 300 million a year that we do, and so they're predominantly CAD, and they have been for quite some years now. The company is 38 years old, and we're in the process of transitioning over to where we want it to be 100% SketchUp. We will be 
hopefully eliminating over the course of the next year or two, the need to actually have any AutoCAD in the office. Um, so we're going to talk about some of the history and what our company outlook is. And then from there, I'm just going to break it down into some of the projects, some of what we do, our philosophies behind it, and how we've gone about things utilizing SketchUp inside of our company. Um, so just a little bit of a background for me. I've been designing and managing multi-member design teams for the last 27 years. Um, I've completed just over 750 million in construction as a lead designer, a job captain, project manager, you name it. I've probably done it. Um, many of those projects we've tried to introduce the VR side of things, uh, interactive, wherever we could engage inside of those designs to show clients as much as possible. Uh, over the years, I've tried to learn as many aspects, starting with when I was 17, learning how to be a framer, slinging concrete, laying concrete block, doing whatever I had to do to learn how this was. Because what the, the approach that I always take is, is if I'm trying to design something, who am I to tell the bricklayer who's been doing it for 30 years how to lay the bricks? What I can tell him is this is how I want it to look. Structurally, this is how it needs to be adhered to. But I need to understand how his job is. So that's why I went out and did that. So some of you may have seen some of the, the work that I've done over the past few years, um, either at SketchUp trade show booths, um, email notifications that you maybe get, uh, sometimes even t-shirts. Um, so to kind of get into how this all came to be, uh, for probably close to 19 years, as I'm sure many of you out there have, have had to deal with, there's that frustration of you have an idea in your head, you know how you want this to go, but there isn't the software to do it. Um, everything from AutoCAD, ArchiCAD, SoftPlan, CADSoft, I tried everything and anything I could, trying to figure out what I could, what I could be able to design better with. Because my idea was, when you go and buy a car, it's a $30,000, $40,000 object but you get to test drive it. So why don't we get to test drive the buildings before we actually pay for them if it's the single biggest commitment that we make in our life? So along the way, pushed more and more and more uh, as part of that. So along the way, uh, I was a heavy soft plan user and I ended up in being introduced to, how many people here have been to John Brock's workshops? Okay, a few of you. I, I highly recommend that you guys go. Um, John and I, let, over the last seven, eight years, have been developing systems where he looks at it from a builder side, I look at it from the designer side, and we try to put a system together that works because we want to know anything and everything there is to know about that project. Case in point, if you have, say, a framer that gives you a framing package, and that framer says, well, there's 10 boxes of nails, we think we're going to need, but they use eight. A lot of our trades, they'll just keep the two boxes of nails. Four projects goes by, next thing you know, they've got enough nails, they nail the house for free, but we just paid for it. Part of that is that we've asked it because it's on a quoting system, but part of it also is, is because we, we had no finger on the pulse. So a lot of what you're going to see today is us trying to have that finger on the pulse and how we do that and utilize it in such a way that you don't have the stigma of the cute little program. And hopefully what we show you today, there will no longer be that, at least with the people in this room. Um, along this, I, I've tried to study as much as I could, learn as much as I could. Um, part of that was finding out on YouTube, like how many people here have seen Nick Saunders' videos? Hey, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> so, as all of you probably were, you've seen these elevations and you're probably blown away by them. The first time I saw them, I thought they were just absolutely amazing. Then I met guys like Daniel Tall, Mike Brightman, John Brock, all of these guys, just absolute brilliant guys. Meeting Matt Donnelly, you know, like everybody that's in this community you can learn from. So, to me, those are the heroes that I look up to in this is that 
no matter how much we show here, there's always something we're going to be able to learn from. So knowing that and seeing what Nick did, what Daniel has done and so forth, that's where we started to take on the big guns. We started to look at getting rid of that cute little program, um, program stigma. So how many in this room think that this is typically what big cat is? Like traditional AutoCAD, you've got your elevation sections, everything's laid out like that. Okay, so now I need five people to put their hands up so that we can have five volunteers so we'll have you two, have you, sir, if you can three come up, we can have you come up, and we'll have uh, Matt come up. So we've got some prizes here, but we're going to play a little game just to see how we did here. So the question that I have, and I'm going to start with Matt. This image here, you have three choices. Is it AutoCAD, is it Revit, or is it SketchUp? Yes, good. Okay, so Rodolfo has a prize for you. Okay, so then the next one. What's your name, sir? Aaron. Aaron. Okay, so Aaron, same question. Is this AutoCAD, SketchUp, or Revit? It looks like CAD, but probably You should have stuck with your gut because that was AutoCAD. <laughs> but you still get a prize, so. <laughs> Okay, how about this one? And what's your name? Viviana. Viviana, okay. So uh, is this AutoCAD, Revit, or SketchUp? This looks like AutoCAD, but it doesn't say SketchUp. Correct. That is SketchUp. Okay, what's your name? Mariah. Right. okay. Well, what, SketchUp? Yes. Okay. And this one. What's your name, sir? George. George. Yeah. SketchUp. And why do you think that one's SketchUp? <laughs> okay. Is there anything else that's giving it away, like that was shown on a Nick Sonder video? The fog. Yeah. The, the fog is the, the big thing. And the point behind these five images, and then R Rodolfo's going to hand out the prizes. Um, now, the, uh, what I should say is the, if you get an estimator card, uh, estimator for SketchUp, that gives you one free license to what's listed on there. You go see John Brock, he'll give you that. If you receive the Condoc tools brochure, you get a free license of Condoc. You go see Mike Breitman, show him the back of it, and he will uh, take care of you. So the point behind this was just to show that the first image or second image that we had started out where it was AutoCAD. The point that we tried to show to our executive, that we tried to show to the people in-house, our designers, we have some designers that have been with our company for 30 years. It's gonna be a tough sell. That's the way things were kind of going when we first started with this. So what we had to do was be able to show them that you could take this CAD file that they have there and even though this is a completely different project, we wanted them to see that we could do exactly the same things that they could do in AutoCAD. Now, once we got the buy-in for that, we started to look at, okay, the questions that we were getting was, well, why should we change? The biggest answer to that is, is we don't live in a black and white world and we don't live in a two-dimensional world, so why do we design that way? So the big question to us was, why, if we're going to sit down and figure out how this project's going to go, and we've had it before where we design a project and we say, okay, there's going to be a beam go here, and then the engineer comes back and it's massive. Crap, that's not going to look right. So the idea was, how do we design and be different? But at the same time, we had to look at some of the things with regards to what we could bring forward with SketchUp. Now, what you have to understand is a company like ours, we have, right now in our, in our uh, arsenal, we probably have 70 models, 36 of which are active right now. But we have one model in particular 
that has 36 different elevations to it. So like different front elevations. So now if you take and do the math, you've got 36 elevations. We carry four fit and finish levels for our interiors plus five interior options. My team is juggling 720 sets of plans for that one house. We have 36 that are active right now. So this is the picture that we had to try and paint to them. So what we ended up doing was coming up with this idea and it actually came by way of uh, when my son and my wife and I were in Florida, we were at Disneyland and I had this idea of how we could do multiple things. And what we ended up seeing was Mr. Potato Head. And that's what we ended up coining this because Mr. Potato Head is Essentially, if you think about it, we have three walls. We have the two sides and the back. Only our front is changing because we're a production builder. So at that point, it's Mr. Potato is the, the three walls, and the front is the eyes, the nose, the ears. So how can we change that? So this is a house, and I'm going to show you in sketch up here. This is a house that we developed that has three main floor plans. We designed six different second floor plans to it. You can have a front bonus room, mid bonus room, and a rear bonus room. Um, and we have a total of six to eight elevations for this house. Um, but everything resides inside of one model. So now if you think about that in terms of if you have designs that can work across the board for semi-detached or for street towns, for instance, if you look at it, and I always relate things when I'm designing, I always relate things back to music and have a musical rhythm to it. So if you look at semis, you can have elevation A and elevation B. So you can have A, A, B, B, so forth, and you make these combinations. If we have five houses that each have four elevations, um, you have 20 houses, okay? now. We can take, because of the way we've developed the system, we can take those 20 houses and we can actually develop that out into 960 different semi-detached homes. We can then, again using music, we do A, A, B, C, A, A, B, D, and so forth. You create this rhythm. If we're looking at street towns, we can create 6,400 different combinations. Now, not that we would ever design or build that many, but the point of it is, is that if I have to do CAD maintenance and I have to update my drawings, I'm updating five houses because what I update there trickles down into the rest of the houses and the rest of the units. So that's where we started to look at, and hopefully I can get all this to show here. And I apologize for the little bit of lag on the computer here. So this is the, the first house. This is our modern contemporary. And these, this is one of the houses that Rodolfo and I worked on together. So I came up with a concept for the floor plans, handed it off to Rodolfo, and Rodolfo developed out some of the elevations to it. So from here, we have one model that we can go through and we can actually change it out. But as you can see, I'm not changing, I'm only changing certain components or certain pieces within this model. Um, and part of that too has to, and, and I will be completely honest with this, part of it is, is that we've had to design the houses a certain way, that you have window locations at certain places, which means we have plumbing at certain locations. Because we had to look at, because we're a production builder, we had to look at how fast we can churn things out. When you do 880 houses a year, you gotta move fast. <laughs> so that's where this kind of came. And this was a, a theory that was developed long before I had come to Jamin, and it's just kind of evolved from there. Um, where we've been able to do that. So uh, that's one of the things that we were able to bring into this. Now, you can also take this to the point where um, I've got this set up where all of them are front elevations. And if you think about in SketchUp to layout, 
you have the layers and, and everything set up, and then you have your pages set up. So inside of layout, you can actually go in and you can set this up. And because you have one model to update, you can go into layout and you've got multiple pages that are set up inside of there with the different elevations. And should we change something on one, it's going to change across the board unless it's a specific layer to that house. So this was part of where we started to go. Um, now, some of you may have seen, I'll just try and get back into here. So, maybe. So at this point now, I'm looking at it from a custom standpoint, and this is where I'm going to show you some of the stuff that, that we use, and, we do, and it'll evolve into some of the stuff that we've done for Jamin. But um, this is the one that we call Making Account. Now, some of you may have seen this image we were posting on the, the social media app. Um, this is an 18,000 square foot timber frame that uh, we're designing for the past little while. And... With this one here, we've done a variety of shots. Um, everything we do from a rendering standpoint, we've gone into Lumion and we've utilized Lumion. Now, how many people in here do rendering in their office? What's the average time for you to do a rendering? Like to render it out? What's that? 10 seconds. Ten seconds? How big is that? The, the image, like the image size, like 19, so, okay, <laughs> so you know that, okay, so to give you an idea, what we did is uh, we utilized, for a long time, we utilized V-Ray, and we had V-Ray in there, and uh, we were getting times where our exteriors for our house were running about, you'll hear my Canadian accent with the about, um, <laughs> We're, we were running about 45 minutes for an exterior to render out at 5,000 pixels. We were running about two hours to render out an interior image. Um, with, with the switch over to Lumion, we've actually dropped that where now we do a 7,000 pixel image and we can render out uh, two minutes, 45 seconds for um, the exteriors, five minutes and 35 seconds, I believe, for the interiors. And the point behind that is, is that it allows us, because of how quickly we can move inside of SketchUp, if we have one of the VPs come in our office, needs to see something for a meeting, we can render it quick and have it into their hands so that they're able to see it. Um, the case in point, one of our guys in our office generates about 60 renderings a day because of the way we've streamlined our process. So. One of the things that we've done with this, and, and this was the, the test that we did, is, so this is the actual, it'll take a second here. Sorry. Yeah, actually what we did, so uh, years ago when I had my own firm, we, we specialized in doing a lot of high-end rendering. So I was uh, kind of familiar with how render farms work. So one of the first things I did coming to Jamin was we implemented a, a render farm. Um, we simply bought two box machines. I don't know how many people have heard of box. They're out of Texas. Um, they're probably the best machines out there for rendering. That's specifically what they're for. Um, they have machines that are dedicated just for Lumion. Um, so with that, we just bought two of those. Uh, we're running the 1080i graphics cards. Um, so we've, we've got those not only running in our desktops, but we also have them in the box machines. And while box is a little bit on the pricier side for the machines, it's well worth it in the long run because we've just, the times that we get out of it, to have one guy sitting there putting 60 renderings out in a day, it's, it's well worth it. So, so with this one here, uh, there, what we wanted to be able to show is where you can have 
Um, and I'm just going to go to it here. So we have the structural timbers that we've put inside of this house. Now, we've color coded all of the timbers in terms of like when the engineer is designing things so that if something gets changed, depending on which color it is. Now, you'll notice that we actually have a structural framing file here. So how many people are um, uh, understand XREFs from AutoCAD, have dealt with XREFs? Okay, so one of the things that we do is we utilize TIG's XREF Manager. It's an amazing program where we can actually go in here and, so of course everything we have is set up as groups and components and so forth. So if we go in here, and I'll just pick this brown color. So I've changed those two front posts. I hit save, and then I go into my structural model. Uh, let me just make sure that that's, yeah, okay. So I go into my structural model, and I go into XREF tools, and go into XREF manager, and I get an error message. <laughs> Good. Actually, it, sorry, it has updated it. So I need to go back in here. My apologies. Okay, so inside of XRF Manager, it now shows, so depending on how many XRFs you have inside of that model, it will then have a list that it drops down and shows the different drop downs for each XRF. So now you can actually go in there and um, this one is saying it needs to repath um, just because I had moved the file. So when I go back in here and click on structural framing, um, it'll take a second and it will change out the columns to be the color that we had inside of the uh, structural file. So if our structural engineers are making changes, we can have that where we can swap it in and out and it stays inside of our model. And what we did is we made a duplicate group of the posts that one, you have the colored ones, but then you also have the finished ones which are textured with the wood so that we can do the rendering. So if there's a change in structure, so now this has told me that it's repathed it. Just hit no there and you can see that, the, that this has changed to the column. So that's very simple things that we were able to do to create that communication. The other thing is, is that there's another plugin. And so it's cross-reference organizer. Um, and now this one we have set up in the office, so I'll have to try and explain it. But the way cross-reference organizer works is it works in terms of the XREFs, but it keeps track of files and where they're located and if they've been moved. So what will happen is it has a screen that comes up and it shows your XRFs inside of your model. And at that point, it'll have either green light, red light, yellow light. So green light is everything's good. Um, yellow light is that the model has been updated by somebody. So if you have multiple offices and you have a central location, you can put that inside the central location. If something gets changed outside of that, then it's going to light up and tell you that something has changed in the model and you need to, to update it. If it's red, that tells you somebody moved the file. So now whoever was last working on the file, you have to then do a little police work as to where did you move it, but it at least tells you that it was moved. Um, and we've, we have that continually at our office with AutoCAD. There's, you know, we haven't got it implemented in our system where in AutoCAD it tells us when somebody's moved something. So this is where, this is just one of the things as we're going into the transition of SketchUp that we wanted to be able to um, bring into there. Now, the reason I show you this is Uh, no, we use, so for our big projects like Westman Village, we have outside engineers that we use. Um, and we've learned to communicate to a certain degree with them. Now, Westman Village is a, a bit more difficult in that 
it's so big that it had to have two architects on it. So one side of the project, the architect, or the architect is using ARCHICAD, and on the other side, they're using, uh, they started out using AutoCAD. Um, they've now switched over to Revit, which on a large scale project, Revit obviously has its place. Um, but there's a huge communication issue because of that. And then, of course, coming back into our office. So um, that's where we were actually able to utilize SketchUp because it kind of talks to everybody. And so we were able to bring in ARCHICAD models. We were able to bring in Revit models. And we could actually move around inside of the site and see the overall site take the chairman for a walk down the main street of the project to make sure that he's happy with the way things are turning out. Um, so with that, I'm going to go into this next one here. And there, we'll come back. There's another section that I'm going to show you on the XREF part of it. Um, but it comes after this one here. So, so this is a typical house that we do. Um, it, we range from 20 foot wide to 28 foot, typically. We have, uh, does anybody here have zero lot line designs? Yeah, okay. Where you can't have any of the windows down the sides and no venting and it's just a real pain in the, yeah. So um, again, this is where we needed to be able to show what SketchUp could do. So a typical house like this will take our team anywhere from a week and a half to two weeks to draw it in AutoCAD. They draw up the elevations, floor plan sections, the whole bit. With us, we wanted to show how fast we could actually put this together. Um, so this house that you see here, and we have some of the information up here with it that you can see after. Uh, this house, we were actually able to do a full constructability model where we showed all the framing, we showed everything from the drainage layers, the, the actual uh, drain pipe to um, what our floor joists were up to our roof trusses. Roof trusses coming in from the actual manufacturer. And we did the entire project where we did the full constructability model, full set of drawings, uh, interior and exterior renderings and we had the capability of doing a full quantity takeoff on it, and we were just over 12 hours where we did everything. So part of that is, one, because of the systems we put in place. Two, it's part of the plugins. That's why I say if you have the chance to go to John Brock's uh, workshops, he spends you know, three hours, three and a half hours actually going through a lot of what we do where we use framing plugins and uh, a variety of things to, to build up to that. But this is where we wanted to be able to show them that we could actually take these, and these are the renderings that we produce to, to show the executive. Um, so one guy. Same thing, it's one, one guy, yeah. One, one guy doing the drawings is uh, roughly a week and a half, two weeks. And what it came down to is, is the, the chairman of our company said, even if you were the same time, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with it being a week and a half because at the end of the day, he got a full set of drawings, a quantity takeoff, interior and exterior renderings, and he got a full constructability model to be able to say, hey, something screwed up with the trusses, let's fix this before we actually go out on site. Whereas with the AutoCAD one, we got a set of drawings and a front rendering. And that was it. Now, the other thing is, it's fun when you go against designers that they love AutoCAD, and it's like this security blanket to them, and you tell them that, but it's not accurate. Well, what do you mean it's not accurate? Well, you're dropping your lines down, just like we were taught. You draw it out and you say it's a 12 inch overhang and you do all of that. However, in the field, the actual truss manufacturer, our trusses, they, if we say it's 12 inches, they're doing a 12 inch overhang. Then you have your subfascia, then you have your fascia on top of that. So it's not the correct dimension that you're actually showing. Um, and that was just one example. The cabinets are another one. We draw the cabinets in 2D. Well, the cabinet supplier draws everything in 3D. Most of them are using 2020. So why not utilize that information? So when we drop the kitchen into this house, it's the exact kitchen that they're going to build. So with that, 
we were able to say, we took this house and we overlaid it into, um, so what we did is we took their AutoCAD drawings because they want everything to look the same. And you might be in companies where we don't want to change the format. Layout is awesome because now you can import the AutoCAD drawings. So you can import the AutoCAD drawing, have the title block, have the dimensions, have all the leader lines and notes, and then you just simply have to put them on the proper layers, but everything looks exactly the same as it did in AutoCAD, which when you look at this, you'll see what I'm talking about, like the set we have up here. We've actually shown where the floor plans are the AutoCAD floor plans, but everything else is our SketchUp file, but it all looks the same, it all blends in. So what we did is we took the AutoCAD one and overlaid it over top of our viewport and we were able to show how inaccurate the AutoCAD models were because they were just drawing lines. So we basically coined them being dumb models. We said like there's, there's no intelligence to them in the sense that they're not carrying any of the objects that we're actually gonna build with. So that's where we, we then, from that point, we were able to then get into where we showed them our reduction. So on a 2,150 square foot house, we were able to reduce our average production time by 83%. Now, what I can tell you is you have to build up your assets, you have to build up your systems, you have to get those in place in order for that to um, be able to happen. So we had a lot of pre-work that we did in the beginning, which we'll show you some of the numbers at the end as to, to what it took to do that. So the other question that I have, how many people here are responsible for the costs um, for their actual software, purchasing the software for their company? Okay, so here's the comparison that we showed, that SketchUp is actually 82% less. Now, we had to do an apples to apples comparison. SketchUp is an organic modeler. We can model anything, a rock, a tree, whatever we want, we can model it in there. So it has organic capabilities. Revit, not so much. So in order for Revit to be able to do that, we have to be able to utilize 3D Studio Max. We have to integrate that actual organic modeling side of it. Um, and that's where we were able to show, okay, well, if we stick with Revit or if we stick with AutoCAD, they're both roughly the same. Either way, we're going to have to integrate some sort of organic modeler. What's that? Oh, okay. Okay, so that's where we were able to uh, run through and show them the costs. Um, from there, we get into this project here, um, and I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna go a little faster on these ones, but by all means, we'll come up afterwards. So this project here is this one. So we actually were able to prove to our company that this project here is nine buildings. Um, there's three unit and four unit projects. There's 366 pages of drawings for this project and it's 100% done except for our landscape architects. It's 100% done in SketchUp. Now, by doing that, we actually showed them that we could reduce our cost by 70% per door in terms of our development. So again, going back to what I was saying with the And I may, uh, I'll explain it while it, uh, while it opens, but um, what we were able to do is it, utilizing that same process for the XREFs, we were able to then take where I needed to lay out what the site mapping was going to be. So I laid out a, a red square, a blue square, yellow square, green square. They were 20 feet wide, 60 feet long, 30 feet high. Made it into a cube. XREF that out. I then gave Rodolfo one of those. I gave two of our other designers one, and then a third designer gave him one. So they each had one to go off of. So this, they had to design inside of the confines of that cube. So this is basically what they came up with. 
Now, when you look at, I think we have the full set here. So when you look at the full set of drawings, when we go down here, and I'll, I'll, I'll just note real quick, like we, we got into like our, all of our building code summaries utilize the Excel documents that get brought into layout because we have other project managers that are working on it that know nothing about SketchUp. So they're able to update everything inside of their Excel documents and then we bring those inside of our drawings. But when the guys were designing, this is what they get for their floor plans. And so what happens is as they got each cube done, I simply updated it inside of my models of uh, the cubes and now it populated the whole building. So now we had a fourplex because I knew in my head, this is how I want the rhythm to go down the street. So again, the AA, BA type thing. Now you'd lay out an entire street. We can actually just by having those cubes laid out, as soon as the designers are done, everything can get updated inside of that model. And now I have all my site mapping as well as all of the construction drawings that these guys have been working on. So all of it maps together. Um, again, gonna kind of go through some of this. And if there's any questions at the end, I can, uh, I can gladly show you guys. Um, Okay, so basically the, the accountability becomes and focus becomes our keys to success. So with that, everything we learned from the XREF si side of things led to a project like this. So these buildings are all set up that depending on the way their grades are, they're specifically set to their grades from the engineers, but we have different building types that are in there. So whatever we change on one building set, will automatically modify our site. This site, we actually did all of the full topographical mapping to it that we got from the surveyors. We brought everything into SketchUp, including we did all of the interior renderings um, for pre-sales, which then leads us to the proven accuracy, which to give you guys any of the builders that are in the room, um, this is a project. Larry, raise your hand. So this is Larry Belk. Larry's actually the designer of this house. And this was a project that John Brock and I worked on uh, a few years back. And with this project, we did the full constructability estimate, renderings, and so forth. And by doing so, we were able to see that just in drywall alone, there was a 40% cost savings because of the way our estimating. So estimator for SketchUp that you see with John here, it's built the way that we build. So with that, we were able to see exactly how much drywall we were gonna need on that project. And when a trade comes back and says, here's what the amount is, we can say, no, this is the amount, that's what we're gonna build with. If we're wrong, it's on us, but we're gonna go this way. And by doing so, we were able to see that there was a 40% difference in costs. Um, and again, this is just another, another example. And then this leads up to our, so overall, you guys, if you're gonna build a system like this, we have to, you have to work on the assets and build that up in order to get that 100% accuracy. Um, from there, you can get into the communication side, which I have an example of it up here where building departments won't allow you to submit 3D full color drawings. They only want black and white. So on this house, we have a set of drawings up here. It's in black and white, but we also have a playbook. From a, it's from a different house, but just as an example to show you where all the 3D vignettes and everything are inside of that, that we hand that to the builder. So he still has all of the information. So any of our site supers, they can get a playbook that has all the details they want inside of a binder so that they're not having to flip through a set of drawings. They have their permit set, but now they have the details that the city doesn't care about. 
And finally, that leads us up to what it took us to develop our assets. So we took three months, we built 630 components, 34,000 textures, 381 profiles, and 72 assemblies that we've now used. That's what allowed us to be able to be as fast as we are with the projects that we're doing. And from there, this is the $320 million project that the, where we utilize SketchUp, uh, uh, all the interior renderings are all done with SketchUps and it, it's done to the point where the chairman of the board would walk through, drive our project managers nuts because he would say, the fireplace was higher in the rendering, I want it like the rendering. Um, we had to buy a lot of beer. Um, but the, the, the far side there is the uh, safety plans that we did up for our crane radiuses, where those were gonna be, where site signage had to be. Our construction manager needed these. We produced a bunch of them for him for him to get permits, but then it came to a point where he couldn't, he needed three more, our teams booked. So this is the beauty of layout is, layout is like CAD and Illustrator had a baby. And we were able to, he didn't need to know anything about SketchUp. We sat down 20 minutes, trained him on uh, layout, and he produced the three plans that he needed by himself. So we've now got construction managers that they can do their own thing, and we can still read the files, but we didn't have to teach him anything about SketchUp. He only needed the layout side. So um, if this is our kind of trade line, old anthrax song that we, uh, we kind of live by, um, and if anybody needs to reach me, um, like I said, it's daddy at jamin.com or my uh, personal email is dwayneaddy at gmail.com. So if anybody has any questions? There's a, <laughs> Rodolfo, how much money do we want? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a subscription-based price. So um, just before everybody leaves, I would just like to, to give a, a shout-out to uh, Larry for... Uh, for you having to kind of be a guinea pig through some of the stuff that uh, John and I uh, were testing out along the way. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Matt and uh, Nick. Say hi, Nick. <laughs> I was waiting for the heckling and no heckling. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I'd like to thank Matt and uh, Nick for uh, a, a lot of the stuff that, that they've taught us uh, over the years. And uh, if you guys have any questions or if you want to see any of the stuff that we have up here, come on up and Rodolfo and I can answer any of the questions that you have. Thank you.